how many have ever had the problem uh, called, it works on my machine? <laughs> to jump on in here, we're going to talk about the role that Docker can play. I'll teach you enough to be dangerous here and show you why, even as a front-end developer, it's very possible you might uh, find Docker useful. But I could get my entire production version of my blog with, there's three containers for that one, going exactly like it'll be on my Linux servers, right here on my laptop, and it'll be exact. So that when I make a change, I have the confidence that when I deploy it, it's just gonna work just like I thought. All right, let's talk about these things then called images and containers. So the way it works is you're gonna create something called a Docker image, or you're gonna pull one from something called Docker Hub. Now what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna create a Docker container then. This is actually the runtime version of the image. So for those that have uh, you know, the class background, which if you've done TypeScript or any other language that uses classes, really it's like the Docker image is almost like the blueprint, the class, and the container is almost like you nude up the class. So what we've done here is said, hey, Docker, let's run this in what's called daemon mode. You'll, you'll see what that does in just a sec. On a port, the external port I'm gonna hit in the browser is 8080, but it's gonna forward to an internal port, okay, which is 80. Now, why am I showing Nginx? Well, because as I said, you know, yesterday, today, a lot of the talks you're gonna see, they do ng-serve, and that's great for development. But at some point, you gotta get that on a real server. Now, that's cool, but how does that help you with Angular? So, what I can do is create what's called a volume, and I can say, hey, container, I want you to point to this folder on the host. Now, I want it to point to my dist folder, and that's called the working directory. So I'm gonna use this little dollar PWD, and it's just a shortcut for working directory. And then I'm gonna to go to, it's USR, share, uh, Nginx, HTML, and if that's wrong, I'll go look it up, but I think that's right. And then what is it I wanna run? Well, again, I wanna run Nginx, Alpine in this case, that's the kind of smaller version of the image. All right, so again, Docker, please go run in daemon mode on port 8080 for us. This is where the browser's gonna hit it. Go run this Nginx Alpine, but create kind of like a link between the container and this dist folder. So that when Nginx sees this USR share Nginx HTML, well that's where your, your code goes, by default anyway. You can change it. Uh, I want it to point back to my local machine so that if I make any changes there, it just automatically picks it up in the container. So you could kind of think of it like just as an alias to some folder that's on your local host, which is my Mac right now. So then you do this. You just kind of write all these out real quick. So you say, hey, Docker, I want to build an image. I would like to tag it as. Now, the thing on the left, you can have your own repositories up in Docker Hub, or for most companies, they'll have a local repository. So this would be something that your IT admin would set up. You as a developer then, if you have rights, would be able to make your own images. Now other people on the team would be able to pull that image down and use it on their box, which is very cool you'll see in a moment. Then you can give it the image name. In this case, I called it .NET, and then I gave it a version as well in this particular example. And then dot means what's the context? Well, use the current folder. That's where the Docker file is, in the current folder. Then I can do what you already saw. Then I could say, hey, I'd like to run it in daemon mode. I'd like to name it .NET. I would like to do that port, internal, external. Well, it's actually, sorry, external is the one on the left, internal is the one on the right, and then there's the name of my image I just made in the last slide. Now, I literally just got Angular in Nginx hitting these microservices, hitting a real database. Now, uh, to be real honest, this is all coming, the names here are all coming from uh, the Node microservice and Mongo. But I wanted to throw another one in, which is ASP.NET Core. So it's very sophisticated. That's where the states are coming from. <laughs> awesome. So if you're uh, someone who does not deal with this side, you, you're pure JavaScript, you don't do the server side at all. Literally all you have to do is Docker Compose build, Docker Compose up, and boom, you can now edit the live source code on your machine and see it in a real world context of exactly how it's gonna be in staging or uh, production.